May the 5th, um, I was let go, uh, myself and another supervisor, same day. Normalcy was now over. I literally prayed all day. What, what am I going to do? I was kind of afraid a little bit. I think the most fear I felt in this whole time is I've just seen so much growth in our family and in my husband and my own life that probably would not have happened with the distraction of his job because he could some weeks work 70 hours a week. This has been the first time that I've been down this road and solely relied on God to get me through it. Close to August, we didn't know what we were going to do. One of our sets of friends in Charlotte, um, in addition to two sets of friends here, offered their home to us, which is very generous um, because we have three kids, that's five people, and two boys, which is like 15 people in one. But then, you know, you guys had made the offer said, hey, you know, you want to come stay with us. It's a huge gift for someone to offer their lives and their home to an entire other family. And so it was important to us to put a lot of prayer and thought into each of those offers. It's just been a blessing to us. When we had to move, um, that was kind of weird because we were going to be moving into a house and now we were having to move our entire house into a storage unit. I've never seen that kind of outpour of community. I had people help clean with me, help move, help with keep my children for days and nights. I definitely was not alone in that situation. I've never seen such a group of people rally around somebody and say, hey, we know you have faith in this situation. We know that we can help. Here we are to help. Josh joked because there's 50,000 Tims at our church and every 50,000 of them were at our house. So it's the Tims and then some. <laughs> you brought, you helped us move and bring a friend and he moves with us. And, you know, I know I've known Troy before, but um, to see, you know, the expression in his face, you know, why are there 15 people here to help you move? You know, and so it, it was good to see um, someone who may not be a strong believer see that that community rally. You know, whenever there is something that we God knows we need, it's there. Uh, I know he has a plan. I know he has, you know, things for us and have thought that from the beginning. We've had plenty of blessings financially. Um, you know, the church has helped us when we needed. There was a bill that had to be paid or, you know, people in our community group have stepped up and helped us pay bills. I've had family that I'm not even in touch with just it was on their hearts to send us money and just those wild stories that you hear people talk about happen you know god had this divine plan for us where you really need the support is when the dust settles i mean i don't know what it's like to be a non-believer in this situation i can't imagine going through any kind of hardship without the daily life of community somebody i met through my community group extends the olive branch and says, hey, there's a position open. Let me talk to my manager. Let me stick my neck out for you, you know, at work and see if we can at least get you an interview. I, I'm a very relational community kind of person. And I think for the very first time in my life, I've met people who not only say that, but they live that. Seeing more and more like-minded people who, who know that community is not just three or four streets around you, but it's everywhere. You know, we're all coming together. We're here to share and to build the kingdom, but we're also here to build each other and to rely on one another when times are tough. I never prayed for help. I always prayed for discernment. So I, I knew God was going to provide. We knew it was going to happen. I was never worried about whether he was going to show his mercy. It was always just when.